everybody, welcome back to my channel and my movie review series. Today we'll be discussing Castaway. If you're new to my channel, I like to do movie reviews. Um, what I'll do is I'll give you my overall impressions and, and uh, the logistics as provided by Google. Um, just basic overall thoughts of what I thought. I'll give you a grade from A to F, which is the grading of the American school system uh, scale. A is really well done, B is highly entertaining. Um, C is whatever, D is off-putting, and F is I shut off the video. You're not going to get really any Fs because I'm making content. So, <laughs> um, but once I do that, once I give the grade, if you have not seen the movie you would like to or want to shut off the video because there will be spoiler alerts, these movies are, or videos are, I guess, be mainly for people who want to get a two-minute, three-minute synopsis, um, overall impressions, or people that have already watched the movie and want to see if you agree or disagree with my breakdown of the plot. Once we give the grade, we'll be discussing the plot, synopsis, and any character development, along with any similar movies or major themes. So Castaway, very well-known movie in America at least, probably all over the world, but it is released in two th the year 2000, it is rated PG-13, it is an adventure slash drama movie, it has a runtime of 2 hours and 23 minutes. You can watch it for free on YouTube right now, that's where I watched it, not sure how long it will be on there. But it says, Obsessively punctual FedEx executive Chuck Nolan, played by Tom Hanks, is en route to an assignment in Malaysia when his plane crashes over the Pacific Ocean during a storm. The sole survivor of the flight, Chuck washes ashore on a deserted island. When his efforts to sail away and contact help, help fail, Chuck learns how to survive on the island where he remains for years, accompanied by only his handmade volleyball friend, Wilson. Will Chuck ever return to civilization and reunite with his loved ones? Did 400 and about 30 million at the box office and was directed by Robert Zemeckis. 85% liked it on Google, 3 out of 5 on Common Sense, something. 89% liked it on Rotten Tomatoes and 7.8 out of 10 on IMBD. Google says it's earnest, moving, and stirring. So, do I enjoy this one? Do I recommend this one? Yes, I do. I thought it was entertaining, and certainly when it came out, I have seen it before. It was a big cultural hit for sure. Like I said, I don't like insecurity and characterizations. I'm mainly just like screaming or just really screechy type of line deliveries. There is some screaming in this one, but it's all right as opposed to just like a character in like an interpersonal setting versus, you know, someone abandoned on an island getting frustrated. So the screaming wasn't super off-putting in this one. Still a little cringy at some points. Um, I do like the Wilson character, but some of the uh, scenes, even watching it back, were just a little... I uh, couldn't really get behind it um, in terms of like what someone would actually do in a scenario like that. But overall, I thought the, the uh, plot moved along well. It is a little long for the runtime at two hours and 23 minutes, but you spend about you know 30 minutes setting up the main plot, about an hour and 20 minutes in um, the main plot, and about 30 minutes of resolution at the end. And so overall, I'm going to give it a B plus, especially for the first time watching it. Rewatching, I probably would just give it a B, but I'm overall entertaining. Definitely recommend this one if you've not seen it. Big cultural hit. You know, it's in. It's a. I really like the characterizations of the, the relationships in this one as well as the tone of just survival and instinct from coming from just like a, a businessman kind of got deal. So if you have not seen it and would like to, you want to shut off the video, there will be spoiler alerts. If you have seen it and want to see my breakdown of the plot, keep watching. So the movie opens up, you meet Chuck Nolan, and as it said, he's very punctual. Um, he's running some FedEx routes from, he's working with some Russian people. Um, but he's just delivering different packages. He picks up a package from um, some lady, I think it's a lady, um, and gets in his truck and then he goes to Moscow. Um, he's doing different, just, just different, you know, team leading a meeting in a warehouse saying, you know, we have to get all of these things packaged and sorted um, by this amount of time. So he gets that done. He's got a, um, a girlfriend, Kelly Frears. Um, he's, you know, leaves her a phone message like, you know, I'll be back in, the t in town, you know, soon, see you then. Shows up, you meet Kelly, she's working on her dissertation for something, which in reality could be probably like a PhD thesis that's correct and factual, absolutely not. But that's what she's doing in the movie. Um, and so they have another scene, they have like a, I think it's like Christmas dinner, either, I think it was Christmas, either Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner, a big family thing. Um, Chuck is, you know, pulling Kelly's leg about um, uh, an ex-fiance or an ex-husband that you know was a convict or a lawyer or something. But Chuck also has a friend, just a work friend, Stan. Um, in the beginning of the movie, you get some indication that his wife is uh, has uh, pretty late-stage cancer, and so they have this big um, 
Christmas dinner, and then Chuck is going to go back on, you know, he has to, uh, uh, like a freight carrier airplane um, for FedEx, and so they're at the, they're at, you know, the drop-off point where he's going to go load up onto the plane. Um, him and Kelly open up some Christmas presents that they give to each other, um, and so Chuck gets a little pendant with her picture in it, a little family heirloom, and Chuck gives her some, like, hand towels, um, a journal. And then as he's walking away, he comes and walks back and is like, you know, I forgot one other present. You know, I'll be back for New Year's, but you can hold on to this. And it's clearly an engagement ring box. So I thought that was even kind of strange. It's like, you're going to propose or not propose. You're not going to say, here's an engagement ring. I'm not actually proposing, but I'll see you on New Year's. So again, just analyzing the plot to a nuanced level. But that was a little strange. Um, regardless, he gets on the plane with his friend, um, well, with pa pilot Albert, his pilot Gwen, a couple other minor characters throughout. Um, they get on the plane, they start flying, um, they're drinking a little bit, um, and then they start engaging in some severe, uh, they run into some severe uh, turbulence. And so the, you know, frantic kind of chaotic scene, they're trying to secure themselves, they're trying to do this, they've lost communications for about an hour, um, and so pretty quickly the plane goes down and they crash into the Pacific Ocean. And so uh, Chuck is, you know, not sure where the other people are. He's able to grab onto an emergency inflatable raft. Um, he's able to inflate that. He gets stuck a little bit. He's able to wiggle it free. And then he is on this inflatable raft. And then the next morning he wakes up and he is washed up onto this island. And so the, that was the, probably about the first 30 minutes. And then the next hour and 20 takes place over, you know, the, their survival instinct. And so Chuck finds some um, packages washed up on the beach, which again, you know, it's always always just kind of like a you know playful thought. It's just like that'd be fun to just have random packages and see what's inside them, and you know, just kind of enjoy that. Again, not like stealing from FedEx, but it'd be cool just to be if a random FedEx truck just showed up to your house and said, you know, here's packages. Um, it'd be cool to open them up and see. So the adventure aspect and that was even fun for me. Um, but he gathers up a bunch of different boxes. He doesn't have much supplies. He's shoeless, and so he's kind of like walking around. And now he's, you know, not much dialogue at this point in the movie because he's just him on an island. But he gathers up the FedEx boxes and now he's got to start to try to survive. And so, again, he doesn't have shoes. He's walking and again, it's a nice Pacific island. Um, he's walking around. Um, his feet start to get cut up. Um, so he wrap, wraps some towels around his feet and hikes up to see it, look up over the island. And it doesn't seem like anybody's there. And he doesn't really have much resources or anywhere to go. So the first night, um, he's kind of scared. He's sleeping in the, the raft thing. He's made a little makeshift shelter. And he hears some thumps and thumps. And he's like, you know, who's there? Who's there? And the next morning, he wakes up and sees coconuts are falling out of the trees. So there's no real animals at play in this movie in terms of, like, predators on the island. I mean, he hunts for fish and for crabs. Um, but no, like, land animals or something like that would attack him. And so he starts, you know, he struggles to crack open the coconuts. And he's able to, you know get some shale or flint rock to splinter and he's able to, you know, tap a little hole in there and get, get some nutrients. But now he's looking for shelter. Um, at the beginning, so he's looking desperately for a way off the island. Um, and so, again, he, pack, he picks up all, uh, he, throughout the beginning of his time there, he starts to pick up more of these boxes that just wash ashore from the plane crash. Um, but then after, like, on the, like, the second night, he sees, like, a, a, sh a carrier ship going by. And so in the morning, he, you know, or, you know, dawn, air time, he gets back on the raft and tries to run back out to sea. Again, his feet are already a little cut up, um, but he's going to try to catch up with this, this freight thing in kind of like a panic, chaotic manner. And so he gets out there. Um, they're having big, big swells in the water. And so he gets knocked out of the raft, and he gets a big uh, gouging wound from coral on his, one of his, his right or left thigh. So now he's injured on his feet and his thigh. He is able to just make some makeshift um, gauze or pouch, patches or just um, surgical or just, you know, something to cover his wound. And so he gets that. Um, and again, as well, um, in the beginning, before he gets uh, stranded on the island, he's, he's complaining about a toothache, like an abscessed tooth. And so that, that comes into play as well as he's trying to chew. And so he tries to eat like a little sardine. That doesn't taste too good. And so... Now he is going to try to start um, and make fire. And so, um, you know, rubs the sticks together, he can't really get it going. Um, he has opened up the, 
Um, the packages at this point, which, which is another nuance of the plot, is I would open up the packages immediately to find whatever resources I could. I think that he, keep, he keeps one package again, has sentimental value, like he's going to return it at the end. Um, but he gets some ice skates that are good for like a chopping tool. He gets some cassette tapes, which they can use like the cassette reel for some sort of like rope or string. Um, and then he gets the, the classic Wilson uh, volleyball, which is, you know, a classic character if you've seen the movie. And so when he's rubbing the sticks to try to start the fire, um, he, he rips another tear in his hand and um, gets angry and takes the volleyball and throws it, throws it to the side. And so he is able to, you know, he kind of calms down and he, the handprint kind of looks like a face. So he kind of just like sketches a little face in there. And that's kind of just his, you know, talking, talking head as, as a stranded individual. And so he starts to get a little smoke and realizes that he just needs a little oxygen underneath his little stick rig. And so he does that and he's able to create fire. And so now he's all excited, burning things, trying to get, you know, uh, he tries to write help in the sand. And now he's just trying to like, burn fire to make sure you know, someone can see him from the air or whatever, but also excited that he has heat and the ability to cook some food if he can catch it. And so he ends up uh, catching a crab and cooks that up. Um, again, he's constantly, he's, he has a little cave for shelter and he has a little flashlight. So I guess even before this, when he's, um, up on top of, like when he hikes to the very top of the mountain, he sees pilot uh, Albert had died and he's just, you know, floating face down in the water. And so he pulls him ashore, um, he takes his shoes from him, now he has some shoes. Um, he finds a little, the little flashlight off of him, um, he learns his real name is Albert, and then he buries him and makes a little memorial on a little rock for him. And so that was another major development, but now the bat last big thing, and this is all, there's no real time lapse from here. Um, but Chuck now has fire, he has some food, um, he has his friend in Wilson, and he's got to get rid of his abscess tooth. So he basically rigs up this thing, and he, when he rips his hand on the stick, I thought it was good. Again, as someone who can handle quite a bit of gore, um, I thought just even like the, the, the minor injuries were, were well presented in a, like a cinematic way. I thought the scenes were well done in terms of like making you cringe and whatnot. Say, uh, same with the, um, the abscess tooth scene he basically rigs up one of the ice skates and takes a rock and just like you know rails it against his tooth to knock it out of his mouth and so again pretty good you know minor minor uh, scene but it was well done to make you cringe a little bit but then he kind of like falls over passes out a little bit and then, then you get a jump ahead four years and so now he's lost a, a good amount of weight he's got a very long scraggly beard and he's, he's pretty um, skilled with he catches a spearing fish and eating, surviving coconut fish and crabs, it seems like, but a lot of time has now passed. And so, basically what he decides to do is that he is going to um, try to build a bigger raft. He has a makeshift calendar to know when the tides are coming in and out and try to go out to sea. He would rather try to fight to live as opposed to just lay down and die. And so, you know, you know 10, 15 minutes of him uh, stripping trees to make rope, um, collecting logs, chopping down bigger and smaller logs for different parts of the makeshift raft. Um, and he calculates how much rope he needs and he um, is a little bit short and so he was like at the very top of the mountain it's pretty precarious and so if he can get back up there there's another like 50 feet of rope or something up there. And so he reluctantly climbs back up there and he had, he had tied a noose and put like a you know, wooden looking person thing on there. You get a little commentary about that later, not, not too much on the lead up to that scene, um, but he take, he's able to successfully scale the precarious cliff and get the extra rope he needs. And so him, him and Wilson, they, he also found a little, like a porta potty, like a quarter of a porta potty where he can like put it just to make it like a tent. And so now he's got this, you know, a big wooden raft with a little plastic uh, porta potty tent on it, and they're gonna go out to sea and just try to, try to survive if they can. And so they make it past the first swells, um, and again, what, what, one of the, what I'm talking about the, at the beginning, some of the Wilson scenes are a little just like weird to me. It's like, hey, I get like talking to yourself, like talking to myself all day, but you know, if you're in a life or death situation, really caring, or like having a friend in a volleyball really wouldn't occur. But obviously when the movie comes out, as you know, it's a big thing, everyone knows who Wilson was or is. And so, um, you know, he gets mad one night and throws Wilson out, 
out of the, the cave and he, and he gets really frantic, like, oh no, where'd my friend go? And chases after him. And so, a little weaker watching it back for those scenes, and it's like in a life death situation like that, who, who would care? But again, as somebody who talks to himself all the time. And so, um, but regardless, they get on the ship, they get past the first couple swells, they see a blue, a blue humpback whale. Um, he is able to catch spear fish at an open sea, which is pretty, pretty, I find that'd be hard to believe that's possible, but I don't know, I'm not an aqua sports marine expert hunter. And so, regardless, he's floating out at sea, a big storm comes, it blows away his little porta potty tent thing on top. Um, he has little, like, coconut canisters, like, empty coconuts to put rainwater in. Um, he's falling asleep, he's, you know, getting exhausted. And uh, Wilson floats away again, and he's able to, you know, swim his raft over and, um, and catch back up with Wilson. And then as he's, you know, passed out, you know, barely, extremely exhausted, probably dehydrated, sunburned, blah, 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 um, a big passenger ship drives by, and he, he gets rescued. So then now the next scene is Kelly Frears. Um, so it's been, you know, four, four and a half years or whatever. She gets a call at home. And she, you know, she's just going about her day smiling and you can tell like somebody on the phone's like, you know, you want to sit down for this or be prepared for something big. She's like, okay, go ahead. And you know, they, you don't hear the voice, but then she faints and she faints right in front of her husband and a child. And so, um, Chuck now gets taken back, you know, they have a big PR thing for the FedEx and whatever, big reception. And so he's going to go back. There's like another four week jump ahead period. He's all clean shaven, gotten some more nutrition in him now. And he's going to go to have this reception back at FedEx and big news, a big presser, big press release. I still hate the, absolutely hate the term presser. And so um, they do that. Kelly is supposed to be there. Um, the husband that she married was like the, the dentist from that, a dentist from uh, Chuck's past. I kind of, I, I forget the name of the new husband. Not super, not super relevant. Maybe, maybe Jerry. I think it's Jerry Lovett as the character. But regardless, he comes up and approaches Chuck and is like, you know, I'm her husband, and she's just really conflicted and not knowing what to do, and so if you could just give her some more time. So Chuck agrees, um, he, and then they have the, the FedEx press conference, and then he's kind of sitting around and looking at the little trinket she gave him, and he takes a taxi to her house. And so they, they catch back up, um, you know, pretty much, again, this, I thought the characterization was fantastic, again, just, you know, you're, you're, you have a fine relationship, you have a big tragedy, you think the person's dead, you move on, you're with a life, come back in there, what do you do? I thought, again, the first time seeing that, I thought the, the relationship drama on that was very well done. And so, um, they kind of just like catch up a little bit. Um, Chuck asks about her kids. Kelly shows him all of the just, uh, magazines and articles that were written um, since he had disappeared. And so, um, she still has the car that she dropped him off in. Um, and so he's like, you know, can I drive it? And she's like, well, it's your car. You can take it. And so his taxi had left. And so, you know, some real, t some real tension. And then they kiss. And then Chuck drives away. And then Kelly runs after him in the rain. And Chuck speeds back in reverse. And they make out pretty, pretty heavily for a second. And then Kelly's like, you know, I love you. You've been the love of my life. Um, I always knew you were alive, blah, blah, blah. And Chuck is like, you know, well, you have a family now. And still wouldn't be fair to Jerry. And so you have to go back to your family. So the characterizations was fabulous in this one, um, in kind of a novel situation for, um, for relationships as opposed to just like cheating or an affair or something like that. And so, um, then Chuck lets Kelly go, and then the next day Chuck goes and delivers, getting to the absolute resolution scenes. That pack he keeps one package that he found on the island that was unopened, um, and takes it, and delivers it to this person, and writes notes saying, you know, you, you saved my life. So there is one other scene that's before that where he's talking with his friend Stan, which I thought the dialogue was pretty good. And he's just like, you know, I love Kelly, um, but you just got to keep breathing, moving one day at a time, move forward, and you never want to know what might happen the next day. And so I, I did like that scene. I thought that was a strong scene. Um, another, another like, like life philosophical life scene that I really enjoyed for the movie The Guardian that we reviewed with the old bartender lady that Murphy's, I think it's called, or whatever. Um, it's like, you know... I've lived and I've laughed, you know, um, him and Kevin, Kevin Costner character are talking about, you know, like, we're all, we're getting old now, and she's like, in a very just like jovial, 
she's not even stoic, but just like pleasantly happy about the life she's lived. It's like she's like, I lived, I laughed, I screwed my heart out, and so if it hurts my knees to walk up the stairs, I know I lived a good life. And so I thought it was another very good, like, like phil phil philosophical scene. Um, but I thought it was just good dialogue and good resolution to the movie. So the absolute resolution to the Castaway movie is um, Chuck delivers the package and then he's driving on the street and he's looking for directions, like good directions like Billy Currington and this chick pulls over and it's like, you know, this will take you here, this will take you there. And so, and then she drives away and you can tell the resolution is Chuck is going to go pursue her romantically and get back on his feet. So overall, very classic movie. Um, definitely recommend it. If you've seen it to this point, you know the whole movie if you've already watched it. Um, but definitely recommend it, and I really like the characterizations along with the survival aspect of this, this film. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.